foreign fucking countries like the United States or whichever, you know, UK or what, whichever you, you want, you know, I'm not for that. But I think that if there is a, a protest and the leader of that country decides to shield entire cities and then start dropping bombs on people, then the United Nations should interfere and not just here in any fucking country where something like this is going on. I mean, that, that's one of the purposes of the United Nations, isn't it? Well, fine. Then let's just apply the standard consistently. Then we have every reason to be in Syria. Okay? So there's no reason for us not to be in Syria right now. Because their protesters, those protesters have had it tougher than any other protesters in the Middle East. The ones in Syria have had it the worst. Probably Saudi Arabia the second worst. Okay, you rock. I'm just saying this is just such crap. Like I said, the French were all perfectly comfortable with Gaddafi two years ago when they were buying, selling him airplanes. All of a sudden now, they got a reason to go you know, assassinate him. And that's all it looks like. I'm sorry. I always stress to you, I said earlier, it's the end game. Where, where Money. And there is no end game. That's the whole fucking point. There's no end game here. Okay. We have now spent, um, you know, at least two hundred million dollars on hardware that we've dropped on Libya. So the defense contractors just made two hundred million dollars because we're going to replace cruise missiles. So we and they'll probably make more than that because when we buy cruise missiles, we don't buy two hundred at a time. We probably buy a thousand at a time. So we'll have a new contract for cruise missiles at a million dollars a pop. Okay. So defense contractors made a big pile of money. The second agenda is is they know Libya just keeps buying arms, right? I mean, they just keep buying them. So if we blow up their airplanes, we blow up their bunkers, we blow up their technology, we blow up all their hardware and shit. We get to sell them more shit, right? We get to sell more arms in the world. So that's the racket. And that's all this racket. That's all, can, that's all that can possibly be going on here. Because I know these motherfuckers don't give a rat's ass about these fucking rebels. Not one of, like I said, we can't even name one of these rebels. There's not one Thomas Jefferson among them. Not one kind of personality that stands out and you say, oh yeah, let's fight for that guy. Not motherfucking one. All right? So the only reason why we're in there is for the fucking money. We win. They go to the Stone Age. We win. Our, our industry wins. We get to sell shit to oil-rich country. That's all it's about. Blow up their stuff. Force them to buy more shit. Steal their fucking money. Freeze their assets. Steal their shit. That's all we've done. We've just stolen their shit. Well, it's not a rational question. What replaces the military industry? Well, I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? What replaced it? What, what replaces wasted labor? Oh, productive labor. Hoover dams. That's what replaces it. You idiot. What, you don't think there's any jobs that need doing? And you don't think labor gets cheaper when labor isn't wasted doing idiotic, moronic crap? God. Labor can be wasted. Okay, and every time it's wasted, the value of other labor is diminished. That doesn't even make sense. Labor isn't appreciated in the States, though. What the hell is that? That doesn't even mean anything. Labor creates capital. There is no capital without labor. The point is, is the laborers get to keep the capital if you don't let these assholes control the fucking world. Well, if rich people love debt. Of course, they love to, to collect IOUs. That's their favorite thing to do. That's what rich people like to do, is collect more IOUs. No, well, whatever. At least Bandit's almost consistent. So why are you griping?
least of our problems. I mean, look, the other context for this for me is this whole Japan thing, the earthquake, Fukushima, this is really horrible shit going on. Why the fuck are we fucking with this crap right now? There's, uh, this is, we got enough problems in this motherfucking world. We got this huge debt problem. We got all kinds of shit going on. This is the last time you want to be fucking with this country. Even if a thousand people were killed by Gaddafi, even if the number was 10,000, I would say, yeah, let those 10,000 die rather than, you know, have the fucking oil fields in Libya on fire. What happens if, if we successfully destroy Libya? And what if he torches the oil fields? Who, who, who's going to pay, who's going to make up that, that tally? Who's going to pay that bill? You don't think a, a burning one of those fields on fire is going to equal for, let's say it's out of production for a year and a half at least. It'll cost a fortune to put it out and clean it up. You don't think that that money is going to be, that that money is more valuable than 20,000 lives? You don't think that that money, that that, let's call it um, $100 billion. You don't think that $100 billion could um, provide for the, the, the life of maybe um, a million people. Yeah, well, like I said, this whole idea of invading without invading is just idiotic. You either take it over or you don't take it over. You either clean it up or you don't clean it up. But we're not cleaning it up. We're making a bigger mess. Libya is worse off today than it was two months ago. That's undeniable. The average citizen's life is worse today than it was two months ago. Undeniable. Yeah, well, Donald Trump is an idiot. So I was at point in time where Donald Trump wants to, he wants to capitalize, put a little computer chip in everybody's brain so they all say, I love Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump is a fucking idiot. Little inheritance silver spoon cunt who thinks he's actually, oh, I'm brilliant because daddy gave me $10 million worth of New York real estate. Yeah, I'm really, really cool. I'm so fucking smart. I had ten million dollars in 1972 real estate, New York. Like, uh, if you just sat on it, if you just sat on that real estate, you know, it would have been worth like uh, 250 million dollars now. Well, he didn't inherit all of it, but yeah, he inherited a big pile of it. And then when he went bankrupt, his daddy came to the fucking rescue. You know, what a, what a fucking shyster that little pig is. You know, he gets away with it. All these rich fucks get away with this crap. But it really is so fucking irritating. I mean, he, he gets to separate his businesses, right? So he gets to keep his New York hotel business separate from his, his Atlantic City fucking failed casino business. So his casino business goes bankrupt, and he's able to keep all of his other assets safe from bankruptcy. Isn't that nice? Wouldn't you love to have it that way, to be able to live that way? You know, to have a separate credit card for everything. And so, oh, well, you can only have my car. You can't have my TV and my house and all the other stuff. And yeah, I mean, what a pile of shit. I think Gary Busey's got fucking kick-ass teeth, which I don't have. I have very weak teeth. So. Yeah, whatever. Jesus, who the fuck cares what I look like? 
But whatever. <laughs> yeah. Report a message. Ah, alright, anyway. Charlie Sheen bombed? Oh no! Gee. I would have paid good money. What the hell was he gonna do with his one man show anyway? What? Pull out his dick and say, yeah, it sure gets a lot, don't it? I mean, what the hell is he going to say? What the hell is a Charlie Sheen show going to be? I'm Charlie Sheen and you're not. Ha ha ha. Record a message. Hey, asshole, quit cranking. You know, you're wasting your fucking time. Jeez, what a jerk. I mean, the answering machine's on and he keeps making calls without even leaving a message. What a fucking retard. Did you see my, my bird, my pinch? Yeah, I did. Of course, three days late. I'm saying, holy shit! Greenest channel went down! Oh, no! And I was like, oh, oh, but it's back. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know how that bird stuff goes, though. You know, it's not good. Until, you, like, until the cat, until you get that cat fat, it's just going to keep happening. You know, so you have to give the cat, like, whipped cream sandwiches and shit. Uh, you know, so it, uh, it's too fat to catch anything. But you are, you have had, had bad luck. I mean, at least you've had some happy endings. You know, that's, you know. I never had a chance, <laughs> because my cat used to leave the squirrels with no head. You can't really glue the head back on. <laughs> so you're just like, oh well, can't do much about that one. The last time I had to fucking kill a bird, I told you, but this time it was, I, I mean, I don't think uh, she caught her properly. She just caught her from like under her wing and basically ripped off a bit of, you know, flesh. But it was like a small incision, so it wasn't that... It wasn't badly wounded, it just bled a lot. Yeah, well birds are so fucked up. I got so pissed off the other day because I was watching this Galapagos nature show. And, um, well first you got these big, the big frigate birds. And I, I thought they just ate fish. But no, they eat other birds. So they eat the little seagully birds and shit. They, you know, they swoop down and just grab them when they're, you know, on the water, and I was like, oh man, that sucks. Uh, and then I'm watching it, and they had these cute little fucking owls, right? And these owls are just so cute, okay? And they're walking around on the ground, and then what they do is they, they wait for the little birds to come home so they can pounce them, but they're just like cats, you know? They just hunt, you know, they sneak up, and then they hide inside the little hole and wait for the bird to come home so they can grab him as he's flying into his living room. And it's just so, <laughs> it was fucking insidious. But you couldn't, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, well, I'd love to have one of those little owls, but they're damn cute. Yeah, I think all predators should look fucking horrible. I mean, it's just not there. I mean, the cat, how can I fucking hate the cat? It's so fucking fluffy and it purrs and it does all this cute stuff. But she's a fucking predator. She should look at, like a spider or something that it's like instantly repulsive. One of my favorite animals is the jackal. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Why? Well, you know, that's pretty stupid. What's your next favorite? The hyena? Oh, they're so fucking pleasant. They smell like shit. They sound like shit. They look like shit. Uh, they fuck like shit. They do everything fucking wrong. The most hideous animal on earth. And jackals are just a little bit better. Hey, hyena is like one of my favorite animals as a kid. Hey, that. You 
mythology, the jackal fed Romans and Venus, the founders of Rome. Hyenas are the only animals that can uh, eat through crocodile skin, and uh, they're also very social. I don't know, I thought they were cool. And lions are scared of them, man. How can you hate on hyenas? Hyenas are the shit. <coughs> lions aren't as scared of them. Yeah, they're scared of them when there's 20 to 1. But man, I love watching lions eat the fucking shit out of hyenas. That used to be one of my favorite kind of wildlife show is when, you know, a fucking male lion, some fucking hyenas would fuck with the wrong male lion and he'd just lop their heads off. I hate hyenas. I hate them. Not fun of them either. The jackals are different. And yeah, how exactly? I mean, what? They're thinner. All right, they're still smelly, still annoying. Like a crocodile and an alligator. They're similar, but different. Well, I'm just sorry. It's too close. Oh, wait. Um, oh, I think it was an old planet or discovery or something where they kind of put the camera inside a rock. And, uh,. I mean, you, you could see like glimpses of them here there and there, but you could fucking hear that it was so horrible. I mean, usually they, they are filmed like from a distance, but the camera was right there and you could, act, you could hear like the, the bones crunching and they were making this, this sound that was just so fucking disgusting. I was just hating on them. Yeah, well, I mean, what did it for me with hyenas was, um, it was a little show, and it's about this little lion cubs, and their mother got killed by the hyenas, and the little cubs are alone at night, and, you know, and, you know, of course, the next day they were gone, and, you know, got hyenas. I mean, it was just horrible. So, yeah, I hate hyenas. But they are disgusting. I mean, they're, they're, they are just disgusting, though. I mean, you know, I remember going to the zoo, and it's like, oh, God, these things are disgusting. And the female having that peanut-like thing is just creepy. Yeah, they're just good. there's nothing good about them. There's just nothing good. Somebody's got a hot mic. He's probably Paulie guy. It's a guy with sunglasses is usually always guilty. But you're quite fond of owls, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, just, you know, ones that hop around on the ground. You, gotta, you know, oh, sorry, yeah. That gets oh, the, they're so fucking cute. I mean, the way it was, they would look up and, you know, they have this, this, you know, they have such human mannerisms. That is why that animal, that bird, is commemorated. It was so weird with this thing, I'm sorry I didn't feel more of it, but she, she was doing, I mean, in the night, I tried to like clean, clean his wound and put some antibiotic on it, and he beat like the shit out of me. But that, that bitch is fucking nasty. But he, he wasn't like that scared of me after a few hours when he probably realized I'm not gonna hurt him and he was like humping around on the bed and he was doing all this this fucking weird kind of humping and looking around like moving his head so weirdly and so I'm so sad that I, I didn't get that on film but yeah I I was petting a pinch I mean how cool am I? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I was reading somewhere, I mean, on your, your comment section, everybody was nagging you and telling, saying it was a female because it didn't have enough color. But it looked pretty colorful yeah, to me. It, it was filmed at fucking 5 a.m. and it was basically dark outside, so when I when I edited the, the, the footage, I, I brightened it. 
and it just washed out the color, but it was very, very colorful. It had like bright, very bright orange. I don't know, it could have been a female. I, I don't know to make the difference, but it was colorful to me. It looked very bright. And all my life, all my life, I never thought that I'd fall in love with somebody on the internet. But that is now put aside. Well, Red Star, I like you too. <laughs> that was pretty creepy. <laughs> Whatever. Ignore that part. <sighs> yeah, well, everybody's an asshole. Whatever. Whatever. Mic's open. I can hear a bird in the background. Stopped. Um. Anyway, where were we? Still hear that fucking bird. Andre, find out who's got a bird and kill him. Yeah, well, you gotta turn your mic off. That's what that means, asshole. If I can hear your bird, that means you're creating oh, yeah. feedback and that you gotta turn your mic off. Yeah, well, Polly's confessed and he's not doing anything about it. Nice? All you have to do is hit the little fucking button on your screen. You mouse over your image there and there's a little button with a microphone. You click on it and it turns your mic off. Jeez, I learned how to use stick cam. After I show up here with sunglasses, you don't even know what stick cam is. There's not too much sun in stick cam, usually. So let's see if I can pick another fight with Karina. All right, there ain't no fucking goddamn extraterrestrial life in the fucking universe. Okay, it just ain't happening. Way too many barriers. They ain't happening. What happens if the terrorists are aliens? Yeah, that would essentially be the film they live. Um, but moving on, uh, even if there are no class M planets that are in the quote unquote habitable zone um, that have water on them, uh, if life is pretty versatile. Um, what about the event of silicon-based life forms or carbon-based life forms that neither need water or oxygen to survive? It's very possible that life might be out there, but it might not be in the same form that we're looking for. But doesn't that require, like, um, the idea that there are a lot of manifestations of DNA? I mean, really, for this to happen, you have to basically have the DNA thing. You have to have the blueprint molecule, right? Because without that, evolution is way too slow. I mean, without DNA, evolution would have taken like a hundred zillion years. DNA is where the evolution took place. That's where it allows for this rewriting of the blueprint instead of rewriting the actual physical structure. Okay, so that's really the key. I mean, that's why sperm don't evolve. Is because, you know, they got no DNA of their own. <laughs> you know, they got no control mechanism. So now you got to come up with some sort of molecule that's carbon-based. And I, I, I just don't... Why, why would there be a duplicate when we don't even have any... There's no duplicate of DNA. You can't even have a variant of DNA. What about the classic Miller-Urey experiment that more or less proved that amino acids can form in the absence of oxygen? 
um, you don't think that could maybe carry over to extraterrestrial life, that there may be some water present, you know, oxygen, and the building blocks of DNA could form? Yeah, well, my argument would be is that we're living right now in this place covered with this humus, you know, all this dead organic matter all over the fucking place in all kinds of environments. It's way, way beneath the ocean. It's on top of a volcano. It's in all kinds of different places. And how come we don't have one single instance of another little reproducing cell form? I mean, not one single one. Ever. Well, actually, when we uh, studying the oceans, we see these tectonic plates dividing. They're trying to understand the movement of the sea, so to speak. And he understood there's life there. All of but it's the same the life, life, though. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> That's irrelevant. That, that life is still DNA life. It's still based on the same DNA molecule that we possess. It's, it's one of our relatives. It's connected to our original ancestor. So that's not new life. I'm saying that here we have this biological experiment going on for five billion years on this planet. All right? And we only have one time that we know of that a cell that reproduces itself was formed and it kept reproducing itself and I think it would show itself because just like the first living form that we're related to it probably blanketed the earth it probably almost suffocated the earth it created it created the oxygen atmosphere it changed the whole structure of the earth so if another cell ever did that it would probably do exactly the same thing it would reproduce out of control just constantly reproduce. It wouldn't even have mortality built into it. It would just keep reproducing, 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 reproducing whatever fuel it could consume. It would reproduce, 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 and it would blanket. It would suffocate whatever other living thing was on this planet. It would basically cause an extermination event, massive extermination, because it would take over so radically and quickly. I think you're talking about cyanobacteria, which caused the great oxygen, oxygenization event. Um, yeah, that was a mass extinction. A lot of that fucking died. The oxygen was kind of prevalent because of this. But, well, that, that happened over several hundred thousand years. It was not quick in the microscopic scale. Macrocosmic, maybe. <clears throat> well, I know, but that's talking about because of the way it was changing the atmosphere. I'm saying we already have organisms now that are highly evolved to selective environments. We're not microorganisms, okay? I mean, you know, a microorganism can live in almost anything. We can't. We have to live in a very, you know, closed, narrow um, environment. So I'm just saying that it would massively ex extinct a, a huge segment of life on Earth because the only thing that could survive would have to be so fucking indestructible. It would have to be just the microbes. Yeah, whatever. I'm not girl. really, I'm not really auditorial, okay? I mean, the auditorial stuff really doesn't do it for me. So without the images, it just isn't going to work. Oh, baby, come on, answer your phone. Fuck this shit out of me. Oh. Yeah, right, with my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck this shit out of you with my phone. Well, I don't think that'll work. I want you to tie, tie me up, baby. Take your hard cock in my ass. Fuck me good, uh, baby. I have a penis. I don't, I don't have a cock. I have a penis. Sorry. Can't help you. I'd volunteer my services. Yeah. I don't have a penis. I just have a peepee. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> She's really out of luck, isn't she? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, okay, good. You got some phone numbers. You're in business.
Yeah, well, whatever. It's nice to have the anal, the, the anal phone sex. That was a really... Thanks. So you are probably related to that kind of crap, right? Uh, people. So can I can I make this statement? So not the statement is it's obvious observation that you don't think there's life outside of the planet? Well, uh, I, I don't I don't think I know the answer to the question. What I know is that life is really, 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 really rare chemistry. That it's so fucking bizarre chemistry actually. We, with all our little moon launchy crappy technology, can't even make one. We can't make a living thing, okay? We can't make a cell that reproduces itself from scratch. We can't do it. Um, so yeah, this isn't just uh, as simple as we'd like to think it is. There's a huge amount of, you know, could be perfect storm bizarre. Uh, seven lightning strikes in a row, whatever you want to say. Twenty? 500 lightning. Who cares? Who? I can make it any kind of preposterous circumstance, right? I'm just saying, as far as I know, it only happened once. Ever. <laughs> That's all I got. It's one event. And from one event, you can't do any probability study from one event. If I roll dice one time, without knowing anything about the dice, how many sides they have, how many faces, what are on the faces, and all I have is one event, I can't draw a conclusion. I really can't, right? No way. But we do, we have rolled the dice a few billion times on planet Earth. We've done lots of experiments on planet Earth. Five billion years of experiments. And it hasn't happened again. Why not? Precisely my same argument. You fucking designed well, whatever. You write some kind of religious statement. Uh, you know, whatever. You believe in God? Whatever. You're an idiot. Well, I'm just saying <clears throat> it, it only happened on a plant which is not already covered with life. just doesn't really make logical sense. Because like I said, what has more parts available? What has more experiments possible than a plant that has a bunch of parts all over the place? I mean, if you expect a car to be built, I mean, the planet that has wheels and motors and seats, you know, has all the parts just covering the surface of the planet seems the more likely place for the fucking car to happen. So I just, I think it's just kind of a bogus argument. Well, whatever. Creation without a creator is just silly. You know, obviously, I don't believe in, a, in um, Little Red Riding Hood or the Three Pigs or your non-existent make-believe creator. I believe in evolution. I believe in physics and chemistry. And I believe there's such a thing as common chemistry and uncommon chemistry. Yeah, whatever. Just play your little word games and, you know, forever and ever. I mean, call it the can your brain cancer Fred, and if it makes you feel better. It will kill you just the same. Well, gee, where did your creator come from, butthead? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> where did it come from? So I'm saying matter, ignorant dumb matter, um, 
came about through some sort of physical process, cause and effect, and there was some original cause, or else it's just a repeating process that is repeated forever. Um, but it's dumb. You're saying there's some intelligence that poofed out of nowhere. Well, sorry, ruining my whole speech. Um, whatever, this whole creation argument is so stupid. So your creator was created by nothing. So I'm arguing that an ignorant universe exists of dumb forces and material interactions. Okay, and it just does. It exists. That's a fact. Um, you're saying that uh, your creator just exists. Your creator that has intelligence, cause, purpose, reason, all of these things, that just poofed out of nowhere. So I'm saying it's, I think, poofing a rock is a lot easier than poofing a fucking human being. Yeah, well, that's where you're just wrong. You know, new life would be even more aggressive in many ways because we have, uh, we have been disciplined through the process of evolution not to overpopulate, um, to, to have a balance with our environment. A new life form would have none of those mechanisms. It, had, it would have none of them. It would be like an AIDS virus or like some other thing. It would just attack. Be like polio or the common cold, or I mean, it would be really. It would be like us trying to, you know, um, destroy certain microorganisms. Um, it'd be really hard for us to exterminate them because they're just, they're, yeah, they're just too simple. They can reproduce too easily, and uh, we'd have no way to 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 eliminate every one of them. So I'm just saying, you know, reproduction's a thing. I mean, when something acquires that ability, it's just going to keep doing it. So I think the opposite is true. I think, like I said, the first life form had to survive many extinctions, in a sense, many really huge reductions in its, in its, in its existence. I think the first living things probably way overpopulated, consumed all the resources, had a huge die-off, and then had to rebuild again, and then died off, and then rebuilt again. And it wasn't until living things started eating each other that they started acquiring some capacity to live in some sort of consistent, balanced manner. And that only comes through being designed for that balance, being designed for an environment. But if you look at most living things now, uh, most big animals, um, I mean, they're highly vulnerable. I mean, we can't even keep some things alive in captivity. They're so vulnerable. You know, that's the whole point. Of sp what good is a sperm cell? A sperm cell doesn't carry its own DNA. It can't reproduce. It's not really a living thing. It doesn't consume and it doesn't reproduce. So a sperm cell is in a weird place. It isn't really a living thing. Well, how the world is going to enter, I mean, saying how is the planet going to end? I mean, that's a different question than what's the fate of the human race. Well, I, just, I don't see how we avoid the... Um, the nuclear slop. So, you know, I, I think we knock ourselves into the Stone Age uh, through war, and, um, you know, and then we do this, we, we evolve out of that again, balances of power again, but I just don't think we're ever going to get past our human nature, which is violent and ignorant and um, selfish. And that selfishness will kill us in the end. How come you never really debated uh, many of the other creationists, uh, like Jesus Freak or Venom Fang, Fang X? Actually, uh, for, as far as I remember, I've seen you make more video responses um, to other atheists like TJ and Fake Sig and Brett Keen and so on and so forth. Uh, how come you never really debated other creationists on YouTube? Well, they're morons. So why would I debate, debate complete morons? But I've done, I've done a whole, I did two or three 
um, Venom Fang X video since he came back. Um, but what's the point? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, it's it's fucking. It's like arguing complete nonsense. And to me, it's more important is what are people going to replace it with? If people are going to replace religion with religion, well, that's no win. Most atheists are more useless than religious people. They're more dangerous. I mean, yeah, the philosophy of a TJ is more destructive to humanity, in my opinion, than the philosophy of a, even a, a Jesus freak. A Jesus freak is almost harmless compared to a TJ. Well, TJ is basically an amoralist. He doesn't believe, okay, in, in any kind of... Um, he, he's, he's a real believer in, in the ego and um, the satisfaction of the individual um, being um, paramount. He doesn't really have... He, he's not a pragmatist. He's not a um, utilitarian. I don't know. I mean, I you know, who knows what, T what goes on in TJ's brain, but I mean, TJ is, a, is so owned by it. And I think his father sort of was too, so I mean, I don't want to get into his personal life, but, you know, Mike's off shit. Um, well, look, the, you know, the TJ thing's good because it's kind of complicated. I don't think he's going to grow out of it just because um, he's so into it. I mean, so much of who his identity is. But I don't think he could find purpose in life without it. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the part of the problem, the context is, is TJ had examples of all this. Thing. He was abused as a kid. I mean, he was molested, different things, and he justifies all that. So he's really fallen into that trap.